April, we sat down with pharmacist Dr. Scott Newman, owner of Newman Family Pharmacy right here in Chesapeake. Dr. Newman gave us some great advice on how to take advantage of all of the services available at your local pharmacy. Thank you for having me. Now tell me about some of the services that are provided by pharmacies that citizens may not be aware of. Um, one of the things that we provide is a pretty well-rounded backup to their health plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, doctors, um, pharmacists collaborate, uh, nurses, and come up with ways to service our community. Mm -hmm. And you know, compounding is a big one that we see in this area that is desired and needed, not only for people, but for also their animals. We do some veterinary compounding as well. Uh, what the, is compounding? I've so, never heard of that. So compounding is uh, probably the oldest part of our profession. Mm -hmm. Manufactured medications weren't around forever. So, you know, originally pharmacists would take several ingredients right. based on what we knew at the time, put them together to have whatever desired outcome that you were trying to accomplish. So ultimately it's taking two or more other active ingredients mm -hmm. and putting them together to make, you know, the desired product or uh, delivery system. So, you know, compounding uh, capsules, for instance, mm -hmm. is something that if it's not commercially available in a tablet form at a specific dose, then we can take it and put it into a capsule and make it the dose that is desired. Um, topicals, uh, ointments, creams, mm -hmm. PLO gels that specifically transdermally take a drug across the skin. Um, and there's two types of compounding. There's sterile and non-sterile. Mm -hmm. Sterile compounding has very strict regulations um, in place and they uh, are able to even do things like make eye drops mm -hmm. out of a patient's own blood, which really? is pretty amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, I personally do not do sterile compounding. The investment's pretty large and I'm not quite there yet, mm -hmm. but uh, non-sterile is probably the most common thing that you'll come across mm -hmm. even in your chain pharmacies. So um, taking several liquids to make a mouthwash or taking um, uh, an active pharmaceutical ingredient like a estrogen or um, even a thyroid and putting it into a cream or another capsule formulation. Wow, so just because you think something isn't available is not necessarily the case. So definitely Correct. talk to your pharmacist about that. Yes. Interesting. Now talk about um, your con consulting with, with uh, patients yeah, or so residents. We have uh, other services that uh, at least your community pharmacies um, have, I think we make the time versus the chains. and. Um, I'm not here to, to say that the chains can't help people because they can, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, they're very volume driven, whereas right. you're, you have three independents, at least in the city of Chesapeake, you have my pharmacy, and Newman Family Pharmacy, you've got Lawrence Pharmacy mm -hmm. on George Washington mm -hmm. Highway, and you've got Irwin's Pharmacy over in Indian River. Mm -hmm. um, we all take the time to make sure that we have a good professional pharmacist patient relationship. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we do sit down annually in October to uh, help guide people who have Medicare Part D eligibility um, into a plan that is affordable for mm -hmm. them. And um, we can talk about that here shortly, the other types of services that we as independents in the, in the uh, community, we do delivery. Mm -hmm. um, we also, um, we get to know people and that's right. the biggest that's so thing. Right, important. Absolutely. Yeah. We have, I've, I've saved lives by knowing things about mm -hmm. my customers that I may not, when I did work for the right. chains, that didn't allow me to get to know them mm -hmm. as well. Um, so the time that we get to spend with our clients is, uh, is a lot managed better, mm -hmm. I guess I could and say. And there's that trust factor that Absolutely. comes to trust it's, you. It's, and you know, unfortunately, the chains have done a good job of destroying that pharmacist-patient mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. and independents are good at bringing that back into the picture just like you would have with your doctor or your lawyers. So. Right, right, that's great. Now why do life-sustaining medications cost so much? Can you tell us your that's thoughts a, on that? That's a very complicated topic. Um, we have an idea that, you know, there's a middleman involved that is pretty much taking, you know, 40 mm -hmm. to 50 percent out of the equation. That's a whole other topic, but, <laughs> um, you know, in those negotiations a lot of times they will benefit themselves and under the guise of negotiating, the drug manufacturers right. will have to increase their listing price just so that they can make the margin right. that they make. And 
you know, in the past, we like to blame drug companies, unfortunately. They're part of the problem, but not the entire picture. The, mm -hmm. the driving force right now is not really them. Um, but drugs are innovative. They, um, we have a, you know, a, one particular drug, which is the one is actually a cure. Hepatitis C was never curable. So now we have a drug that actually cures it mm -hmm. in a three month cycle of, uh, of a medication regimen. And uh, that's kind of amazing if you think about it. We never could say we had a cure before. Yeah. You know, everything treated symptoms. So innovation is expensive and to get to that's, that point yeah. is, is also expensive. Um, not changing Medicare Part D plans annually for our senior citizens that qualify for Medicare D is a mistake. That does raise drug costs for an individual. So what we do on, you know, at the, in the pharmacy is, is that we try to uh, find ways to reduce costs. We will tell you know, doctors of a cheaper alternative, right. be it either list price cheaper or insurance is going to cover more of it unless the patient has to pay at the point of sale. And we will also find manufacturer coupons for people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the EpiPen thing that, that happened a few years ago mm -hmm. that brought some of well, a lot of this to light. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been finding coupons for people. I know I didn't have time to do it when I worked in chain, but as an independent, it's important to me, obviously, to search for coupons, manufacturing coupons that help okay, reduce definitely. costs. Definitely, coupons are great. So let me ask you, so basically, if somebody is having difficulty, they can they can schedule an appointment with you or their pharmacist, Certainly. I should say. So so this is so much it, it more we could talk about, but unfortunately, we don't have the yep. time today. We'll have to definitely bring you back because this is it's very great information. Thank you so much for joining welcome, us. Sure. Appreciate Thanks. it. Be sure to check your local pharmacy to find out what services you can take advantage of. Well, that does it for this special edition of A Closer Look. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in January with an all-new show. Have a wonderful holiday, and we'll see you soon.